talk uh, about database load testing using Python and Locus. Uh, before I start, though, I want to say thank you to Pi Ohio, all the volunteers, everyone who's here. I really appreciate it. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I have around three years of experience as a data engineer. Um, I also currently am in the Django Knot Space uh, program for the Django ecosystem. It's a semi-structured open source program. It's eight weeks. I think we're, we're going into week seven. So if anybody's interested in that, come talk to me afterwards and I can get you connected. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a boot camp grad. Uh, I went to Color Coded Labs, which is in Columbus, Ohio. I uh, went for full stack JavaScript development, mainly in the MERN stack. Uh, but I, after that, I eventually went and got uh, a job as a, as a data engineer. Uh, father of four, four beautiful kids, a little crazy too, but I still love them. Uh, and then when, in my free time, when I, when I do have it, I'm also an artist. So I do a little bit of art on the side just to kind of you know, work the other side of my brain a little bit. So uh, today's agenda, uh, we're going to start off talking about what is load testing. Uh, and then we're going to move into the uh, Locust uh, program, the Locust module. What is it? How is it typically used? Then we're going to look at a little bit of code. We'll do uh, a slide about load testing your Postgres database specifically. We'll look at a little bit more code. Uh, I would also want to go over some next steps, things I want to work on next after this. I want to potentially make this like a series of, uh, of things that I do. And then if we have time, hopefully we do a quick demo at the end. So load testing, what and why? So, so what is it? It's simulating an expected load on any type of system that you have. Uh, it could be an application. Most of the time, it's, it's, a, it's a web app. Sometimes it's an API. In this case, we're going to be looking at how to do it with a database. Uh, so why do you need it? Essentially, uh, it's, it's for engineering and product teams to understand how their system is going to respond. So everybody usually tests the happy path of normal traffic. No one really tests what does it look like if we get peak traffic, how do we test scalability. This can help you do that. It also provides uh, insights on potential bottlenecks, uh, delayed response times, again, scalability, uh, ver both vertical and horizontal as well. So what is Locust? Locust is an open source load testing tool for HTTP. Uh, again, it's, it's typically used for, uh, for load testing APIs, websites, things like that. It's written in Python. The amazing thing about Locust, though, is that it's super extendable. So you can, you can, extensible, so you can extend it to pretty much anything you want. Some cool things that I want to highlight, though, you can extend it to testing libraries like Playwright. I don't know if anybody's ever dealt with Playwright. It's an end-to-end -end testing tool. You can write it in JavaScript, Python. I think there's a couple other languages it supports. But you can take those Playwright files that you have, and you can load them into Locust. And Locust can create simulated users that go through all those actions that you've written out in code inside your Playwright file. So that's really cool. And then if anybody's ever used LoadForge for load testing, uh, they are a SaaS product. They built their system, their, their app, on top of Locust. So if you want to save a little bit of money, just use Locust uh, and do it this way. So, so Locust, how is it typically used? It's typically used uh, for, again, uh, website and API testing. What it does is it spins up these simulated users. It uses G-Event. Uh, and then that uses Greenlit for like coroutines. So you have some concurrency. It'll spin up these users, give them a task set, which is a list of a couple tasks. It could be hit this endpoint, do this thing, log in, and then it will hit that API or that website to do that. So let's look at the, the Locust code a little bit. So you have this quick start user. This is just an example from, the, from their site. Uh, but you have this user class that you, that you write, and then you, give, you put methods in there of describing what you want to do. So in this case, it's hello world. There's another one that says view items. The most important thing here are the task decorators. That's what will tag that specific method as a task to put into that task set. And then all of your users from that point on will, will, uh, will execute those things. 
there's also a number, I don't know if you see here, if you can see on line 12, uh, the, the task decorator can take in a parameter, an integer. That number is a weight of how many, how much, or how likely that task is to run for each user. So in this case, view items is gonna run three times more than hello world, typically. And that's really nice, so if you, if you wanna test your system that's read heavy or write heavy, you can kind of weight it depending on what you wanna test for, so. And then this, I wanna call out this thing down here, this, this method down here, uh, on start, they also have an on stop. Uh, so you, when the user starts up, you can pass in an endpoint like login and then you can give it this payload with user information, the username, the password, and it can log in. It can simulate those things directly from, from Locust. So what does running a test look like? Once you have Locust, the Locust file built out, like the one I showed previously, it's very simple. You can get, get it up and running in a few minutes. Uh, so you'll go to your terminal, you'll run locust-f with the file name, and then it'll give you a, a URL. It's usually like 0 .0 .0 with a uh, 8089 port. And then you go to your browser, and this is what it looks like. So you can give it the number of users at its peak concurrency, and then you can give it also a number to ramp up each second. So every second it'll add five, in this case, to that total list of, of, uh, of users, a total number of users, and then it'll hit this host that you provide as well. Uh, and then in the advanced options, you can also uh, put in a, a time, sp specify a time for that load test. So it could be three minutes, it could be 30 seconds. There's an example down here for three hours and 30 minutes. I don't know why you would do it that long, but I mean, it's, it's an option as well. So let's look at load testing for Postgres. Uh, what, what does that look like? It's very similar. It's basically the exact same thing. You create a task set, you create these simulated users. The only difference is that the tasks that you're running, they don't hit an endpoint, uh, like, a, like an API endpoint uh, or, or a specific URL. They're hitting the database directly. They're actually sending queries to that database. So let's look at some of the code for, for how you would do that. Uh, so you'll create a Postgres client. And one thing I wanna mention is whenever you extend the functionality of Locust, you have to use this uh, request event. That request has a method called fire. It's basically just firing off every time a user makes that request. And you'll handle those requests and you'll track, if it's successful, you'll track the response times. You can do response length as well. Uh, and then uh, you put this into that, that class and you pass it into each user when you construct that user, which I'll, I'll show in a second. Um, let's go to the next one. So this is the user class. So here I just called it Postgres Locus. I pass in the, uh, the meta class user that Locus provides. I give it my task set uh, as, a, as a parameter and then down in the, um, the constructor, the, the init uh, method, I'm passing in that Postgres client that I just built previously into that. So now it has a each user has a request handler, it can execute those queries, and then it can track those response times. So next, let's look at the task set specifically. It looks very similar to what I showed uh, on how you typically use it in Locust. It's pretty much the exact same. I'm only, the only thing I'm doing here is passing in a connection string, and then from there I, um, I'm passing that connection string into each of the, the methods below. And then here, again, uh, looking at the task decorator, each one of these tasks, the run select query and the run update query, they'll each run about 50% of the time. It'll be like a, a weighted, because I didn't give it that parameter, um, that integer parameter on the, on the task decorator. Uh, so things I wanna build next. Right now, this is just testing Postgres. I wanna do something with Mongo because it would be pretty easy. I just haven't had time. Uh, MySQL would be pretty cool. And then I wanna, at some point, maybe do it with Redis because I'm just curious about how Redis really works. Like I wanna learn more about caching, uh, buffers, how Redis serializes data, like that, that'd be really cool. So um, next is the demo. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it works. I already had some issues with, with this dongle, so hopefully this will work out correctly. Um, 
So let's go over to here. And then here, what I wanna, what I wanna show, I'll just go over the code really quick. Um, so let me also, okay. So I'm importing PsychoPG. If anybody of you, if it, any of you have ever used it, uh, it's like PsychoPG2. Um, it's great, it's, it's really good. It's a uh, database driver to connect to Postgres. They have a new version, like 3.1 something. That comes with G event support out of the box. So that's why I'm using this one. This is the new, newest version. So it works really well with Locus already. Uh, so I can get those concurrent users spun up. Um, so I, I create the, uh, the create connection uh, function, pass it into execute uh, query. That gets passed into this Postgres client here that I showed before. And then down here is where I have my user tasks set up. Uh, again, th so I, I put some numbers in here. So this run update query will run three times more often than, than the run select query. It's, it's weighted. Uh, it's like 75% to 25. <clears throat> and then down here in the uh, Postgres, uh, Postgres Locust user class, that's where I'm passing in the client again, giving it a wait time, give, and then passing in those user tasks uh, down to that as well. So let's, um, we'll give it, we'll run for five minutes, we'll do five minutes. So I'm going to run it for my terminal first, and then I'll go to the browser and just show you what it looks like. So Locust, um, you just you can pass it in these these little tags or these these arguments. So you can specify your users directly in the terminal. You can give it a spawn rate. You can do your runtime, and then these auto start and auto quits uh, tags are really nice because then you don't have to go manually quit the test. It'll just do it automatically. So so there we go. It's connecting. It's also executing. And if we navigate over to this. Um, over here, let me refresh this. There we go. Does that look? Um, okay, so as you can see, uh, it's tracking those requests that each user is doing. Uh, it'll also track failures. One thing you need to, to remember, though, is there's like a max connections setting or in your config for Postgres. So if you say spin up 300 users and if your max connections is set to 100, it'll start throwing failures. So you want to make sure you're like either going in and increasing it for the test or, or you know, whatever you need to do for that or keeping it at that minimum or that maximum. Um, you also have the, the median, the 95th percentile, response times, all that. The, the best thing about this, though, is the charts because I like charts. Um, so total requests per second. So the green is the request per second. Red is failures. Response times. Uh, so at first, it was pretty high, then it dropped down, and then you have your average response times there in the yellow, right? Um, down here, number of users, so it starts about half of what you give it, like 50, and then it'll go uh, 10 every second until it gets to 100. Um, and then if you wanna share these results, this is, this is also a really nice feature that Locust comes with out of the box. Uh, oh, actually, let me show the, sorry, let me show the current ratio as well, because remember, I, I put in those those arguments into those the task decorators. So if I go here to the current ratio, you see my run update query is 75% compared to the run select, which is 25. So you can weight those depending on how often you want it to run. And then if you wanna download this data, you wanna share it with people, you can download a C, uh, CSV. You can do the requests, failures, or exceptions all separately. What I really like though is the download report because it'll take a snapshot. I would make sure like if you're doing it, hit download report after the test is finished because it takes a snapshot at that moment in time. Um, but it'll give you everything. It'll give you the stats, it'll give you the response times, the failures, uh, it'll give you the, the, the charts with it as well, and then you can just download this and then send it to whoever you need to send it to. Your database admins, your, uh, your engineering team, whoever's handling the scalability, uh, the scalability of, your, of your database, and you'll do it that way. So, um, yeah, that's my talk. Uh, it was a little short, maybe, but that's it. Thank you.